Hi everyone, today we're going to explore the eBike sample application. My name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. As a reminder, this video is part of the series in which we tour the different sample apps. If you haven't watched the first episode yet, I recommend that you watch it for a general introduction to sample apps. In this episode, we're going to talk about e-bikes, and I'm going to guide you through a tour of the application. We'll see its use case and we'll see some key features. For example, we're going to see Lightning Messaging Service, the Experience Cloud, the Pops of API, and we'll finish with UTAM. E-bikes is a fictitious electric bike manufacturer, and they use a custom application to run their operations. Let's go and check it out. I'm now in the eBikes Lightning application and I can check the product explorer to take a look at their electric bike products. Now the information that is displayed on this page is the same as you would have on the regular record list here. Let's move back to the product explorer. So this view is created with three custom Lightning Web components. On the left side you have a set of filters which allow us to filter the products displayed in the catalog on the center. I can now select a product here to view the details of the product and I can even open the product record page here by clicking on this button. And here this is a standard record page augmented with a custom landing web components on the side here. As I mentioned earlier, the product explorer page is built with three custom landing web components, product filters, product list and product card. These communicate thanks to the landing messaging service or LMS in short. LMS allows components on the same page with no common ancestry relation to communicate with each other. We use two messages on this page. The first one is product filtered and it allows us to pass the product filter values to the title list components. We then use a second message, product selected, to pass the selected product ID from the title list to the product card component. Let's take a look at the code. We're now in Visual Studio Code and what we're looking at right now is the metadata of our message channel. You can see two of them here. These are the two messages that we use, product selected and product filtered. For each of these messages, we need to declare a metadata type and we can specify a number of fields like here, a filter field, which will contain a JSON object with our different filters. Things like the filter search name, the price, the model, etc. Once we have declared our metadata, we can then use it in our components like this product title list component. The first thing we do is to declare a bunch of imports. First of all, we create imports for the Lightning Messaging Service functions, the publish function, the subscribe function, and a context. And then we create import statements for our message metadata, our two messages, what we just saw earlier. Then, later on in the component lifecycle, when the component is connected, we subscribe using the function we just imported to the message, the product filtered message, and we specify a handler function. When a product is then selected from the product tile list, we use the publish function with the selected message metadata to create a new message with the product ID that was selected. That's how you subscribe and publish with the Lightning Messaging Service. One of the unique features of the eBike sample application is that it comes with an experienced cloud site that you can find from the top menu there. This site demonstrates how you can build a public facing website for community. What's great with Experience Cloud is that it's part of the Salesforce platform and you can release components and share data that you use in your org. Here, for example, we use our products for custom components and we allow access to some objects and records. The eBikes app also demonstrates an integration scenario with an optional side app. We use the PubSub API with change that capture and platform events to communicate with the side app. Let's check it out with a short demo. eBikes account executives need to create reseller orders to order bikes from their resellers. And so when they do that, they just create a new reseller order account. So let's say we want to create one for Northern Trail Cycling. And then we're going to be able to pick, to pick a number of bikes. So let's just take a few of these bikes there. We can adjust the quantities. And whenever we are ready, we need to send this order to the manufacturing division of eBikes. Now, the manufacturing division of e-bikes does not use the Salesforce platform. They're running on a third-party application, as you can see on the right side of the screen here. And in order to integrate with them, we're going to have to send some events with the PubSub API. 
So whenever I click on Submitted to Manufacturing, this will send a change that I capture event using the PubSub API. The eBikes Manufacturing app will receive it and it will update accordingly. Let's try it now. I'm clicking and there we go, order appears here on the eBikes Manufacturing app. By the way, this app has been built with Lightning Web Runtime, but we could create it with any kind of technologies. We can host it wherever we want, here on a local machine or on any cloud platform. Now that we have reviewed our order in the manufacturing application, we can decide whether to reject it or to approve it. Let's say we're happy with this particular order. We can click on approve. When we do this, we're gonna use again the PubSub API, but this time we're gonna send a platform event back. So when I'm clicking on this approve button, I'm gonna update the path and the status of my order to approved by manufacturing. And that's how you communicate between third-party applications and the SESL platform. To learn more about the manufacturing application, head over to the eBikes repository. From the table of content, you can go to the optional demo installation and check out the PubSub API demo. This will give you the steps to install the secondary repository containing the eBikes manufacturing app. Finally, the last features of eBikes that I want to highlight today is UI testing. Unlike the other sample apps, Utime ships with some end-to-end -end tests written in addition to the traditional Apex and Lightning Web Components tests. These UI tests are built with Utime, which stands for UI Testing Automation Model. Utime is open source technology built by Salesforce that lets you run UI tests. Utime works in combination with a UI test runner such as Selenium or WebDriver.io. Its key benefit is that it greatly speeds up the development of UI tests and reduces subsequent maintenance efforts. Let's see a UTAM test in action. I'm gonna launch a UI test for the Product Explorer. The test goes quite fast, so I'm slowing down the video at this point to explain it. This test uses Chrome controlled programmatically by WebDriver.io. You can also use other browsers and even go in headless mode when you're running tests on a server as part of continuous integration. Our test logs into the org, navigates to the Product Explorer app, enters a search term and selects a bike so that it opens its record page. All of this in about 10 seconds. This is just a short example of what you can do with UTAM. This concludes our tour of the eBike sample application. We saw the app use case, we saw some of the key features such as Lightning Messaging Service, UTAM, Experience Cloud, and the PubSub API. Head over to this link to get started with the app and learn more about some of its key features. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you found this content useful. Remember this is part of a series and we'll be touring with different sample apps in the upper videos. Thanks for watching!